Up until relatively recently, the provision of hot water and heating for the home has relied upon the burning of fossil fuels. But as this becomes more of an environmental issue, the concentration moves towards using renewable energy technologies. And Worcester Bosch is in the forefront of these technologies, providing tomorrow's heating and hot water solutions today. Despite all the evidence of global warming, for those of us living in the UK, these islands can still feel like a pretty cold and inhospitable place for a great deal of a year. And for that reason, there are many people that would dismiss the idea of using solar energy to heat their homes. But there is technology that makes this possible, and that technology is called a ground source heat pump. Now the sun shines every day in one form or another, whether it's cloudy or not. And when the sun shines, valuable solar energy is stored in the ground. And getting that heat out of the ground and into our homes requires a very simple bit of technology. Now another myth is that you need acres of ground in order to make use of ground source heat technology. But this isn't true. There are different systems to suit different locations. And even if you've just got a modest garden, you can use a system which will make use of that heat. Now, I must just emphasize that this is ground source heat and not geothermal energy. So forget the hot springs in Iceland and all that sort of thing. This is just using the sun's rays, which are stored in the ground as heat, to heat your home. So how do we get all that useful heat from the ground into our homes? Well, the heart of a system is a heat pump. Now this transfers heat from the ground collector through the heat pump, through some pipes, into a thermal store in our home, and then onto our radiators or underfloor heating. Now, you'd be right to think that this requires energy in itself to pump that fluid around. But the good news is that for every unit of electricity that you put into the system, you get four units of heat out. So it does have a very cost-effective ratio. In the UK, the most popular method of heat extraction is through horizontal collectors. This continuous loop of pipework is buried one meter under the ground and roughly speaking you would need the collectors to cover approximately two to two and a half times the total amount of floor space of your home. If space is more limited a compact collector either in a horizontal or a vertical position can be buried in a series of trenches. For the borehole method of collection, a specialist contractor would be required to bury a pipe up to a depth of 200 meters. This method of heat collection is more suitable for ground which contains a higher proportion of rock and stone. Now after just two days into the job, the guys have been blessed with a bit of good weather and they're getting on very well. They're already at the stage where they're starting to backfill the trenches. In the first pit you can see where the compact collector has been laid and that's being backfilled. The brickwork at the end, by the way, is really nothing to do with the job. It's because this is a showcase project and they want to leave a small area open so people can see what's involved. But normally the ground would go back there's no brickwork or anything like that, and you wouldn't even know it was there. Now that's one system, the compact collector. But if you've got the room, 
The other way of doing it is to use a continuous trench, which in this case just zigzags up and down the paddock. And this is just laid with a single pipe. Now this is the cheapest and easiest option, but if you haven't got room for the compact collector and you haven't got room for the trench, there is a third option of just drilling a borehole. And this is the trench that contains the flow and return pipe. It's collected the heat from the ground source collector and it's taking it through to the house. And you'll notice that this pipe is insulated. That's done to stop that pipe losing its heat as it goes towards the house and also to stop it transferring into the return pipe which is running back at a lot colder temperature. And the return pipe is also insulated because in some circumstances it could freeze the ground. <laughs> 